everyone. In our previous screencast, we've discussed the main features of the APT and we also had a quick tour of the user interface. But now it's time to actually perform our first publishing. To do this publishing, we'll need two things. We'll need an IPT instance to access. Here it is. And we'll also need, of course, a dataset to publish. Uh, we decided to publish a dataset about uh, Coccinella Day, so ladybird beetles occurring in Belgium. And to prepare this publication, I have visited the scientist who's responsible of this, uh, of this dataset. And I've actually collected a lot of uh, information about it because I know I will need them later. So I wrote all that in a, in a Word document here. I have, for example, an abstract or contact information or many other informations about the, the data set that will be, that will be needed. Um, but this person also told me that this, uh, the data is not ready yet. There is an ongoing digitization effort. There's some cleaning, uh, and data validation needed. So the data is not ready yet, but they'd like to publish as soon as possible. In that case, I suggested that we publish a metadata only data set now, and then later on, we'll be able to attach real data uh, to it. So let's go. Uh, the first thing I need to do is connect to my IPT uh, instance. So I type my credentials and I click the login button. Now we will have to create a new resource or a new data set. Those words are synonyms in the, in the IPT. I go to the manage resource page and at the bottom of this page, I have a form to create a new resource. I have to, to select just two things. I have to give a short name which is very simple using only uh, letters, numbers, underscores, things like that. It's not the real uh, title of the data set, but it's a, it's a short identifier. So I will call it Belgian ladybirds. And I have to choose the data set type. I have checklist, sampling, event, metadata only other on occurrences. Uh, in that case, we'd say it's a metadata only um, data set because we don't have the data yet. There's an option to, lo to load a file already, but I suggest you to ignore it for now. This is for advanced use only. So we can create now, we can click now the create button to actually create our new data set in the IPT. After this, we arrive on this um, resource overview page, which is really important. And I really uh, encourage you to, to have a look at it because you will use it a lot when uh, publishing data uh, using the APT. Basically, all your dataset configuration will, will happen here on this page. I have, uh, I have the title. I know it's the Belgian Ladybird dataset. I have a section here on an edit button to add metadata. I have published version. It is, it is used to publish, to publish the data. I have some visibility settings and I can configure resource managers. What we'll do here is simply take those sections in order. Uh, let's first start with the metadata section. I have a small warning sign here. If I click, the IPT tell me that the resource is missing mandatory metadata. And yeah, actually, we discussed in the, in the concepts video that every time you want to publish a data set at JBIF, you have to provide at least some basic metadata. I will now click the edit button. And I am now on a page that allows me to enter basic metadata about this data set. We can have a quick look. I have to select a few things like the publishing organization. I have to give a description, some resource contacts, some metadata providers, and that's all. 
So the metadata is divided in several sections. This is the basic one. Um, it's only the most basic information and it's also the mandatory section. If you look at the right of the screen, you can access other sections describing geographic coverage, taxonomic coverage, keyword citation, and so on. That's a way to author more metadata. What we'll do now is take this form in order and fill all the informations, taking uh, our, our source metadata in, uh, in the doc Word document that I collected when I visited the responsible person. I first have to give a title to the data set. Uh, it's pre-filled with the short name, but we want something longer here. For example, Belgian coccinella de ladybird beetles of Belgium. Uh, I have to choose a publishing organization because an IPT can publish on several, on behalf of several, uh, organizations. So we have to say which one of the installed, um, will uh, will hold this uh, this data set here i have only test organization number 1 it's a test ipt i have to choose the data set type it's metadata only for the moment uh, i have to tell in which language the metadata is it's in english so i can let it here uh, i can tell at which uh, frequency i plan to update the data set it's not uh, nothing will be done automatically there but it's just to give a hint to your to your users. So we don't really know here. So I will let the unknown value. Then we have to choose a data license for the, the data set. It's, it's mandatory now at GBIF. And uh, I can see that when I discussed with uh, the responsible person, he told me that he wanted to put it everything in the public domain, in the, the CC0, Creative Commons 0 license. So I can choose it here, public domain, CC0. And then I can add a description of the data set. So it's like a short abstract. I also have collected that information here. I will copy paste it. Then I have to give uh, resource contact information. That's really important because that's the way or your data users will be able to, to contact you if they have any question or concern or remark about the, the data. So I can add a new contact person. I need to enter first name, last name, position and so on. I also have all this information here. The contact person is Tim Adrian's is a researcher at the Research Institute for Nature and Forest. I will skip the address just to, to be efficient. And I will also add contact email address. So now I have a first uh, resource contact. Um, I will also add a resource creator, which is basically the, the person who's responsible for the, for the data set. I have another form here. Uh, if the same person is the contact and the, and the creator, I can use the copy details from resource contact button. So the IPT fills it automatically. And then I have to, to give a metadata provider, which is the person who's uh, authoring the, the metadata. So in that case, it's me. So I will not copy the details from the other person, but I will Enter my uh, my own. We'll also keep it short here. Here it is. So I think I filled all the important information in this basic metadata page. So I will click uh, on the save button at the bottom. And it's accepted. I have a message saying basic metadata section successfully saved. 
No, I can see I am on another metadata page, which is about geographic coverage. So I can give a bounding box, uh, giving the extent of the data set, and I can also give a textual description of the, of the geographic coverage. So I already have this information. I also have this information in my Word document here. Uh, I have a small text saying that the data set deals with ladybird occurrences in Belgium and that this subset is pertaining to Flanders, which is one region of Belgium. So I will copy paste the description here and I can simply on the, on the box here, I can draw and give the geographic extent on the map directly. So, select and say this is only Flanders, the north part of Belgium. So I draw the bonding box, I put a description and I can now save this text on the geographic coverage section. I also have a success message and now I am in the next one, the taxonomic coverage. Here, the scientists told me that they were dealing... Um, ah, no, I don't have that information. Yes, I have this information here. We are dealing with a family called Coccinellidae. So I can add a new taxonomic coverage and say that we are talking about family and the scientific name is coccinelli day and this is the ladybird beetles the common name is ladybird beetles and i can save my taxonomic coverage it's now saved there are much more uh, metadata uh, available. I really encourage you to fill as much as possible. This is very important. But for the exercise here, we will, we will stop. So we have filled some basic metadata, which is mandatory, some information about the geographic coverage and the taxonomic coverage of our data sets. Now I will click again on the, on the title of the data set. So I will go back to the main resource management page. Okay, we've now authored some metadata and we will continue filling uh, the different sections of this page in order. So the next one is published version and there's a very important publish button. Uh, now I have to give a bit of warning. Uh, the publish button will not make it uh, immediately available uh, at GBIF. It means publish internally, publish in the IPT, but um, connecting it to GBIF will only happen later. So I click on the publish button and the IPT uh, asks me to summarize the, the changes. It's useful when you do different version, but here I would just say first revision metadata only. That gives a nice uh, history of the, of the data sets. And I will click yes, I want to publish. And I have a success message here saying me publishing version one of resource Belgian ladybirds finished successfully. So now my, um, my resource is available internally into the IPT, but I want to make it uh, available to the rest of the world. I go to the next section that says visibility is private uh, and I have a public button here. So if I click on it, I will, my resource is now public. But public is still not uh, visible at GBIF. To actually make it public at GBIF, we'll have to click the register button that is still here in this uh, in this visibility section but i have a, a warning message here and the warning message tell me the resource cannot be published because the current published version is not publicly available 
Um, that sometimes happens with the current IPT uh, version. Uh, it's a bit, uh, there's a small uh, workaround. You, you will have to publish again. So I will go back to the previous section, click again on the publish button, give a message, published again, click on the yes message. Now it's republished and I can change the visibility uh, again and I have a register button. If I click this register button, the IPT asks me confirmation that I agree to share my data on JBIF. So I can confirm that I have read and understood the terms and click yes. Yeah, I have a small error message here because of my network connection but uh, otherwise uh, the publication is now complete. So yeah, there's a bit of confusion between uh, the, the publish section and the visibility. In summary, you need to publish the data to make it available locally. Then you make, you have to make it public. So it's, it's made available to, to users that are not logged to the IPT. Then you have to register it to, to GBIF. And sometimes to register, you have to republish in between. Only when you have done uh, all this, the data is really public. So we've now uh, created a data set, authored the metadata, published it, ma made it public and visible at GBIF. So we have a first uh, successful uh, data set publication. Thank you.